Our next speaker was born in Tehran and graduated from high school in Iran. She's lived the last 25 years in Germany, Michigan, and California. She obtained her Bachelor in Accounting and Finance from Oakland University. Although she enjoys working as a financial and compliance auditor, her love for people, Iranian culture, and determination in doing the right thing has kept her active in public work. She, along with four of her friends, spearheaded the establishment of the Persia House of Michigan, which promoted Iranian culture by opening a school for teaching Farsi to young students and adults, book projects at public libraries, art ex exhibitions, and more. She participates in many charities involving issues related to children, specifically Mahak, also known as ISCC Foundation. In the past two and a half years, she has passionately been active as a women's rights activist in the One Million Signature Campaign of Southern California. And along with other members of the network, has helped educate the public on discriminatory practices against women. The driving force for her activism is the hope for achieving, achieving an Iranian society free of discrimination on the basis of gender, race, religion, nationality, and age. Please welcome Ms. Sudabir Farouk. active 
participation of all levels of society in bottom-up grassroots movements. Otherwise, no politician would ever speak in such projects. In an effort to change the discriminatory conditions, the movement has focused on three main strategies. One, aim to prevent or support those who were victims of the law. Two, inform and educate. Three, resist suppression and work towards changing the dominant structures. Women's rights movement in Iran started over 100 years ago. The first voices of women's rights in Iran were heard in the 1900s during the Constitutional Revolution, where women started an underground political participation in the revolution, advocating the women's right to share this, this social space. At first, they had basic demands such as right to education, because they believed that through education, the conditions for women will improve. Soon, formation of NGOs such as Association for Freedom, and Women's Secret Union followed, and they actually became strong enough to establish the first primary schools for girls in 1907. After these primary steps, there was a big wave of publications and periodicals written by women for women, which expressed the dissatisfaction of women of their social, cultural, and political limitation and called for change. Since then, the Iranian women's rights movement has experienced many ups and downs. I, along with some of other women of rights activists, believe that the most important event affecting the women's status in Iran was the 1979 revolution, which led to many civil, legal, and cultural changes. And although in many cases it made the conditions much worse for women, it led to a higher presence of women in the public sphere because the new Islamic society was deemed safe enough for women from conservative and religious families to leave home, get educated, and join the workforce. This was huge, as today we witness that over 60% of university students are women. Meanwhile, the new legislation after the revolution except for voting rights of women, basically abolished the small accomplishments women had achieved in area of legal age, divorce, temporary marriage laws, and custody until that day. Almost all of the current discriminatory laws have been around during the past 100 years. But instead of advancing with time and improving, they have regressed. The most important laws that deeply affect the daily lives of women in Iran are laws regarding marriage, divorce, child custody, inheritance, the right to travel, right to choose place of employment and education, as well as many others that discriminate against women. Post-1979 revolution, women were eliminated from many professions such as being a judge. Freedom of attire was taken away and the Islamic hijab was enforced. And besides the deep changes in the legal system, there was a cultural revolution masterminded by the government of the day in form of a huge propaganda that was advertised in schools, magazines, and TV, which portrayed the ideal picture of a woman true motherhood. And the definition of a good mother was said to be one who sacrifices herself for her family and for the son she gives back to the society. So women in Iran, who up to that point had successfully gained some social freedom, cultural openness, and political power, were instantly placed 100 steps behind and were treated as second-class citizens. Women were first to demonstrate against the regime's discriminatory practices, such as the mandatory hijab, and they were first victims of violence inflicted by the state. However, as the pressure built up, they found more reason to resist. And finally, during the reform era and the Fatakis presidency, new NGOs such as the Iranian Women's Cultural Center was formed. 